so first off, um, so, so don't forget there's an option to do the homework um, six, which is on the is is on the stuff with the graphs and the page rank and stuff like that. Yeah. To uh, influence my decision on whether or not to do that, what is your cutoff for uh, like an A? Um, yes, um, that's a good question. Let me. Um, so, um, so, so, so everyone, so, um, let me just um, glance at the current grades. One point and like one percent, right? One point, three points. Well, so the homeworks are worth fifty percent in the and the and the book and the project worth fifty percent. So two points in the homework is worth one percentage point. And one project is one. And, and two points in the project is worth one percentage point. But right. Um. So probably what I'll do for grades. Is um, so no one's got an infinity yet, but I okay. uh, just want to uh, I'll just cover my days and anything possible. So I'm not exactly sure what I'll make the uh, I'll make the other cutoffs. Um, so if you're less than eight percent, you'll probably be less than a B. Um, so if you're if you're above nine percent, you'll at least get a less. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure where I'll put the B plus. So I will, uh, and so um, and uh, I've also got some. Um, so so. <laughs> So I'm not exactly sure what other cutoffs are going to be. Uh, so it, it may depend if there are a bunch of people or if there's someone who's grouped together with some other people who's right below what might otherwise be the threshold, maybe I'll move them up or something like that. So I'll just try and make things even. But, but I'll try and be 80% is going to be at least a B, and 90% will at least be an A minus, and 95% will at least be an A. Um, so and then if you're calling the grading, um, your um, um, your final grade um, is going to be equal to one half homework um, uh, plus one half project, right? And so basically, I'll take the homework grade and the project grade, and I'll average these together. And so, if you did all of the homework things were total to uh, 100 points, that's the same thing with the project. Okay, so, so, but if you only did the first five assignments, then your total number of points here will be divided through by 90, right? Because, so, because the, the sixth assignments were 10 points, but it's option, right? So if you do that one, then I divide through by 100, but you can gain up to 20 points. Um, does that make sense? Right, so if your if your current homework grade you have 78 points out of 90, so, so you can figure out what this percentage is, and, and that'll go towards a homework project grade. If you do the if you do the next assignment, and you get and you can get say 20 out of 10, um, you're going to get 90 out of 100, right? 
So, so this could be a fourth way. Or, you know, um, but if, and if you don't do as well as you present here, um, then I'm not going to count. So I won't give you any penalty for, uh, for trying to do either. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be above 95% and you're going to get it, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to average together the two. <coughs> it's going to be 105. I, I'm going to. I, I, I'm going to add together these. I'm going to average together the two numbers. Both are going to be percentages while averaging them together. So, so, so if you didn't do as well in the homeworks, but you did really well in the project and you win the poster contest, then you can make up some in the homeworks that way. Right. So, um, all right. So, um, so, and, and I think if you look on Canvas. I, I think you can look at your average grade, right? It's, it computes it for you. I've never seen it from the students' yeah. point of view. So, so, so you understand how what you're doing in the class. So. Okay. Um, all right, so um, the, the other thing is the, is the, the poster presentation is on Wednesday. So I've got the room from 4 until 7. Um, I, I, I would like you to be set up at 5 o'clock. I sent out a notice to faculty and grads to invite people to come. Feel free to invite your friends as well. Um, you know, and, and I'm hoping it's ready to go by 5 o'clock. Um, so, and then I'll try and, I'll have, to, I'll have to go through all the posters and see everything. And so it'll take me probably at least a couple hours to do that. So I, I may try and get there before 5, and if you're ready before then, I may ask to go through your poster before then. Um, so um, what are the other things? Um, so where do you get your poster and the poster material? So you'll need to get it from Chris Coleman's office, which is in kind of the back part of the main office. So if, if you just go to the main office and you ask people where are the posters, they'll um, be able to direct you. Um, so it could be that the, there's a little kitchen off to the side when you walk in and maybe that the poster boards and the stands are going to be there. And so for, or it, it, maybe I'm able to roll them all into, um, I, I, I'm able to roll them all down the hallway so you don't have to get them done. Um, so, so, um, and so, uh, so, 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 so make sure you pick all that up, and they should be ready by 4 o'clock. Um, they'll probably be ready earlier in the day if you want to go and check them as well. Um, and I think Chris told me he got, he's been able to print all the posters he has so far, but he's not here tomorrow, so he won't be able to go in tomorrow and check them. But anytime on Wednesday, you can check them. And I guess if something goes wrong, you catch it in the morning, he might be able to reprint it. Um, but he, he usually looks them over and everything's seems fine. Okay, so, so you need to pick up your poster and have it set up by five. Um, and there should be more people than posters, so, so to work together, it should be, should be easy enough. Um, the other thing you'll need to do is you'll need to, um, when you come in, um, Yan maybe doesn't know this yet, but she will, um, she, um, she will hand you a piece of paper which has, has which will have your name on it and two, the names of two other posters that you need to go and look at. So in addition to usually trying to man your poster, have someone there to explain it. Um, and this is easier if you have groups you can take turns, right? But you need to go and look at at least uh, two other posters and just write a short summary just so I know that you looked at it and you know that things made sense. So no more than 250 words. So just that you saw these posters was was the main idea of the poster, and then you also need at the by at the end of the poster session, um, you need to turn these back into Yan with the short report on them. If you don't, if you haven't finished your your short write up by seven o'clock, you can send your email as well. Um, but but the other important thing on here is you need to vote for which ones you thought were the uh, were the best posters. 
And I think it said the two best posters as voted on by you get an extra 10 points. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So the poster voting is only from people of the class, we can't just like tell friends and family to come and vote for us? Yeah, so um, it's just from people in the class. Um, so, but you know, you can, I'm fine, um, you can do whatever you want to try and convince people to vote for your poster, but you can't vote for your own poster. So, um, so you know, last year it was the coolest posters won, um, but maybe you have, Props or something. I don't know. Um, so I saw you. I, I, I hope it's a lot of fun. Can we bring bribes? Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm okay with bribes that are food, um, but but I'm but it but it eating food from someone brought does not it does not obligate you to vote for them either. But if you think it adds to the poster, then um, then that's fine. Um, if you if you are in the class of just an audit and you'd like to vote, um, you can also send me an email and I will I will give you a form that you can vote. Yeah. Um, so, um, um, yeah. So, 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 any other questions about the posters or about how that will work? Okay. Um, um, the last thing is you should have passed around and you have a little piece of paper. Um, so, um, so, so, um, so, so you have a chance to give feedback for me online through this web form, but if you'd rather say something, maybe that's not, you know, you, you'd rather not be on record or something, um, you can write it on this piece of paper. Um, you, I, I would like to know things like um, which lecture was your, was your favorite lecture, which one did you not like as much, um, these sorts of things would be really interesting for me. So, you know, I change the class a little bit each year. I drop and add some lectures. So, if there's something that you would like to hear hear more about, or you, you would have liked to have hear, heard more about, um, then that's that's good to write down. Any other things you think I could uh, I could do um, to improve the class? Um, that'd also be great to write down. If you um, if you uh, um, if you thought. If you thought the videos were helpful, um, um, that'd be uh, um, that'd be good to write a note. Um, it took extra effort to do these, where where other people are, other faculty are thinking of doing this in the future as well, um, because I've gotten generally fairly positive feedback, except for some issues with iTunes U in the last few weeks. So um, so so if if there's a very positive um, view of this, you know you may be getting this in some of your other classes. So it's worth you to say so if you don't. If you don't think it was worth it, you'd rather there was extra TA hours or something like that. Um, then you should say that too. All right, so there's there's a trade-off for everything. Um, I, and so you have until the end of class to do this, so if something pops in your head, that's why I'm giving to, them to you now instead of later. You can also always send me an email if you want to. Um, and you don't write your names on them, they can be anonymous, that's fine. Um, okay. Um, all right, so um, um, that's it for the administrative stuff. Um, so th th this is the last lecture of the um, semester, and we're going to talk about um, um, graph um, sparsification. Um, and so we'll talk about kind of two general ways that people have been trying to do this. Um, but also, if, if you think you're going to have, if you want to ask me other questions about something that we covered in class earlier that you want more information on, I'm also happy to try and answer those questions as well. So if, if you think you have questions, then you, know, you can start thinking of them or ask me, and then maybe I'll try and get through this quicker so I have time at the end to answer, ask, answer general questions. If not, I could probably spend a whole lecture just talking about this topic. Um, but um, it'll, it'll probably depend on those. So, all right. Um, okay. So, so we've been talking about these. Um, we've been talking about these graphs, right? So, so a graph we can write as a set of vertices and a set um, um, 
in a set of edges. And um, so, as I had mentioned this, I think, in earlier lectures, but for a long time, it had been assumed that generally in graphs, there was some sort of constant such that, like this, um, so that the number of edges in the graph was generally some constant, at most some constant times the number of, of vertices in the graph, or less than equal. Now, you can always create these large graphs which are dense. So there are about, um, there are about n, if there are, the number of edges is going to be the number of vertices squared or um, there about. Um, but in practice, people thought generally there's some constant where you generally don't find a huge number of these edges. Usually it grows in some linear way with the, with the number of vertices. Um, so, um, so, so they thought it was, it was this, but so in practice, often what people have seen is that as the graphs are growing by adding more vertices and edges over time and maybe losing some, typically you have something like um, where the number of edges is the number of vertices to some power, where, where C is generally in 0 0.08 to 0 0.02 um, to, um, to 0 0.5, right? So, so the largest C could be is, is basically one, right? If, if C was one, then you'd have, you'd have every possible edges in the graph, right? And this is only counting edges which um, you don't have multiple edges between a pair of vertices. Then you can kind of encode them as a single edge, right? But so it's generally growing with some sort of polynomial. Um, so, the, um, but what we'd like is to be able to preserve a lot of, understand a graph, preserve a lot of the structure so that the size of storing it grows more um, linearly with the number of vertices. So graph sparsification is going from this, this input graph um, to another graph um, where it's usually the same set of vertices but a smaller set of edges um, such that the number of edges prime is less than or equal to some constant t times the number of, of vertices. And we'll talk a little bit more about what's known about this value of t. Okay, so we're still going to keep all the vertices. So in Facebook, we're still going to think of keeping all the users, but we're going to reduce some of the edges. Now there are some other ways you can think of trying to reduce this down so you don't even keep all the vertices. But this kind of changes the problem fairly fundamentally. You're no, you kind of, you somehow have to group together the, the vertices, say this user is really, I'm going to pretend this, everyone in this class is the same user or, or something like that. So you don't, you can't get to the fine grain um, detail of individual users, but you, um, so, so it's a different way of compressing the graph information. Whereas this is only compressing the um, relationships between the people. Okay. Um, so, it, it, um, so it, and t is not going to be a complete constant. It's going to have some function of being here, but it's going to be like some um, log of the number of vertices instead of some polynomial. Um, all right. So. Um, What's a so? What would be a simple way of thinking of um, trying to get rid of some of the edges? How would you try and do this? So if you had, um, so um, remove edges in triangles. So, this, so if you have something like this, it would go to 
Um, so what is the advantage of doing an operation like this? So, yep. I was going to say it makes it acyclic. Um, so it makes it acyclic, but we're not going to, so the, the cyclic properties actually don't matter so much if you don't think of the direction on the edges, because then you can walk back and forth on the same edge, and so you don't really have to worry about the cyclic properties. Um, but so this, this preserves two important properties of this graph. Now this is, is a toy graph here, right? But, um, um, so one property is if it's, um, it's um, um, the graph stays connected, right? So if you can, if, if if all the vertices are connected by some path of edges, then they're still connected, right? I could have gone from these two before, but now I I can I can get to it if I have to go in a different way, right? And so. Um, the second one is that the um, the graph um, the graph distance does not change too much, right? So before the distance between here and here was a distance one, you have to walk on one edge. Here's from here, it's still one. This is the only one that changed. If this was A, B, and C, and this is A. And so the distance from A to C used to be one, and now it's going to be two, if you count the number of bits. So it, it hasn't changed too much, right? It changed by only one half. Um, so, so, so these are kind of the, now, the, the, the distance is actually a, um, a, a stronger property than whether it stays connected because if it's not connected, then the distance is basically infinity between two things that are not connected. So this is a stronger property. But so the, these are kind of the things that you want to have preserved, right? So if you have um, if you have a larger graph, um, Um, so then, if, you, you, if you're looking at this, this edge seems really important, right? If you took out this edge, it would probably it would disconnect the graph. So it, it would change a lot what's going on. Okay, so, um, so the, this edge somehow is, seems to be more important to keep than the other edges. Um, but, so, so one other trick that we can do is opposed to just on remove edges is we can change the weight on some edges um, that we do keep. So we can say, we can get rid of this edge, but say this one now has a weight of two instead. So, so this will give us some more flexibility in how to, how to understand this. And then the, um, so it's, it's as if there are two, um, there, there are two edges between here instead of, instead of one. Possible to use a uh, residual min hashing for changing the similarity? Can we use this on that? Um, so, so, how would you use LSH with um, a graph? I mean, you would probably have the hash functions to map uh, so like an isomorphic property where a subgraph is isomorphic one of the subgraph and have a particular hash function to trace that or catch that. And, and that one thing can be reduced as one edge or maybe some small subset. But the idea generally would be to have hash functions to cater to graphs. Mm. Um, so so we'll, we'll kind of do something like that. It's not exactly what you're saying. Anything dealing with subgraph isomorphism mm -hmm. is, you know, the checking whether there is a subgraph isomorphism mm -hmm. is at the opposite. Simple right? hash uh, or other heuristic would probably be something like an uh, edit distance for graphs. Um, so yeah, so you could try and map it to another graph that has a small edit distance. But we also, there's, so it's hard to do LSA just for edit distance on strings. So this, this may actually be, be kind of hard on graphs as well. And so we're actually going to use this trick where we change the weight of certain edges in order to kind of um, 
get rid of a bunch of edges but replace them with you know, map this, a bunch of edges to a single one with uh, with the larger weight. Um, so we're going to use some, some randomization, but it's not going to be as complicated as anything you say, actually. Um, so the, the algorithm is actually, the algorithm is, is, is actually going to be very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to, um, um, we're going to keep each Edge uh, with some some probability p e. So this is for edge e. So we're going to keep each edge e with probability p e. And so I, I need to define what p e is. And then and then we're going to give it a weight equals one over. Um, so. If we sample it with a very small probability, then we're going to give it a very large weight. If we sample with a small probability, um, if, if we sample with a high probability, right? So we sample, we keep with probability one, for instance, then its weight is still going to be one. So this is assuming to begin with that that each edge has a has a weight of one, right? So each edge will have a, have a weight of one, and we're going to sample it with uh, if we, if we keep it with probability one, we, we, its weight is still one. If we keep it with probability one half, its weight is going to be two. So that means that maybe there are two edges we could have picked, and we're, we're, we're probably only going to keep one of them, and uh, then, the, um, then the, the expected weight is going to be the same. Right? So the expected weight of every edge is going to be the same as it was before. So this, this process, even if I don't tell you what this PL is. This process um, um, preserves the expected um, value of each edge weight. Um, so, so this is an instance of a technique called important sampling. It allows you to sample things with different probabilities, but um, but keep the overall weight of all the things you sample to be the um, um, to be the same. And so um, th there are certain variations on this you can do that will, um, if you choose these probabilities correctly, you can reduce the variance with different variants uh, with different versions of the support sampling. But if you sample the probability and then you um, weight it up. Inverse to that probability, you keep all the weights the same. Okay, so um, so how do we choose this these PE for an edge? We're going to say that um, P and I'll write I J. Um, so this is with the edge is is between two vertices, vertex I and vertex J. Um, and so then this weight is going to be the, um, the minimum of 1 and um, t over the min of bi and dj. Okay, so what does this mean? So I've chosen some parameter t. And this t is going to be this uh, the size of the number of edges I keep, right? So I keep for each vertex, I'm going to keep about t edges, okay? And so I'm so I'm putting that t in here, and I'll explain what the value t is in a second. Um, and so I'm taking the minimum of two things, one and something else. And so this one is so I don't keep something with probability more than one, which which would make sense. If I'm dividing by a um, by a, a large number, or if, if, if I'm divided by a small number, um, so in, and so di is equal to the degree of um, vertex i. Um, so this is the number of edges um, which inc include 
vertex. All right, so, so this edge has a degree of three, this one a degree of two, this one a degree of four, right? So, so if, I, if I look at the degree of both of the vertices, which this edge is part of, and I take the smaller one of the two, so if it's attached to a vertex which doesn't have any other edges, then, this de then the degree would be one, right? So this, so ignore this weight here, this vertex, this edge right here, this vertex has only degree one, so this, the weight here is gonna be t over one. Actually, the minimum of one or t over one. And t is gonna be some, some value like 20 or something like that, right? So if, if this vertex has degree less than 20, I'm gonna keep all of its edges. Right, so, so that's what it's saying. This, so if, if, it, if this value is greater than one, I always keep the edge. So if either of its vertices have degree less than or equal to t, then I always keep all of its all of its, um, all, all of its edges. Right now, if a, if a vertex has 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 degree you know larger than t, then I might not keep all of its edges. Um, so what it's saying is that some of the edges are more important than others. Um, and, and we don't know exactly, but we know that the edges that are attached to vertices that have small degree are, are going to be, um, are going to tend to be more important. All right, so, uh, so that's what this technique is saying. And so this is gonna have a property, and I'm, I'm not gonna prove this, but if we, if we set t equals to one over epsilon squared times log v. Um, so, so t is going to be about log of v times this, one over, this nasty one over epsilon squared term. Then we're going to get the following property about graph cuts. So, um, so then, uh, so then th this will basically preserve um, all of the graph cuts in a in a graph. So in order to, to explain this, I need to define again a graph code, right? So um, we're going to look at two subsets of vertices. Um, these are both subsets of the vertices. And the cut, cut of S T is going to be the um, um, the edges in E um, such that um, call this E equals I, J, um, that, that either that I is in S and J is in T, or I is in T and J is in S. Right, so, it's, so if there's a graph cut and it's uh, one of these nice graph cuts here, so this is S and this is T, then the, the edges in the graph cut are going to be just this one edge where one endpoint is in S, the other endpoint is in T. So this would be like I and this would be G. Okay, so, so then we can look at the, um, the cost of the cut. Um, the cost of ST, um, we're gonna write this as, um, as, as the size of the cut, ST over um, the number of edges. And so if we set this here, um, um, then what we get, and th this will be over over uh, edge set E, then the cost of, of E as T minus the cost of E prime as T, this is going to be less than S. And this is with some constant probability. You need, you need to, there's some probability of failure like any randomized algorithm. But, so it means that if you look at any, any cut in the graph, and this is not just these cuts that make sense, you could also consider some weird cut like this, or a cut where you took every other vertex and put it on one side and the other side. You're going to approximately preserve this property. 
So if you sample, if you set the probability of an edge like this with some parameter t, and you set t to be about one over epsilon squared times the log of the number of vertices. So you're going to preserve, about approximately preserve all the cuts. And these cuts are an important indicator for you know, understanding the, the community structure of the graphs. Right? So the, the, these were really in, important properties that we wanted for detecting groups of, of users which are similar. So we can get rid of a lot of the edges by just kind of looking at the degree of both of the vertices of each edge and then flip a coin, um, a biased coin of whether we keep the edge or not. And at the end, the cost of any cut is going to be about the same. So this is a pretty, it's a very simple algorithm, um, but it has this it's nice property. Okay, so um, so who's um, um, so who's satisfied with this? Is anyone satisfied? They want to move on to other stuff. Okay, so so who's not satisfied? Everyone else, or who's just not that excited about it? Okay, so everyone's in between not that excited and not satisfied. Um, okay, so so let's. Let's uh, figure out two two issues with this, and I will I will kind of solve one of those issues, um, or tell you how to solve one of those issues. Um, the first issue is that this term is all right, but this one over epsilon squared term is 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 not great, right? Just to get this to be only off by ten percent, which seems like a lot, right? Of all of all the edges, I only. I only care about one edge here in this cut, but I'm only I'm off by only 10%. But then this number is going to be 100. So that means if I looked at any vertex of degree uh, of degree 100 or less, I would always keep all of its edges, which would be all of these edges here, right? I, I'm, I'm not really saying anything useful, right? If if I only care about 10%, if I cared about only 1% off, then it's it's 10,000 times log of e, right? So, so this is, is you know, is, is not going to be that, that useful because this term is, is pretty large here. Um, and this is really too bad. Um, th this problem I'm not going to be able to fix. At least, at least I, this 